warm welcome to the second week of embryogenesis. Come check this out. The second week is called the week of two. Because all the things here are divided into distinct subdivisions which are enumerated as first we got Cytotrophoblast and Sin Cytotrophoblast For number two we got the Epiblast and the Hypoblast For number three we got the Amniotic Cavity and Primitive Yolk Sac and then we got the extra embryonic mesoderm that's divided into somatopleuric and splanchopleuric parts. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -da. Welcome to week two of embryogenesis, ladies and gentlemen. That was a Frank Sinatra number with different lyrics. Of course, these are not the lyrics of the song. So we actually reached a very interesting part in the movie of general embryology because things are going to start to get real now. Let's see where we are. Firstly, a quick revision. So we already finished fertilization. The two cell stage at about 30 hours. The morula at about four days. Here. Yeah. And by the end of the fifth day, the zona pellucida disappears, the blastocystic cavity appears, and by the end of the sixth day and the beginning of the seventh day, roughly, implantation has begun. Right? We also have the light blue colored embryo blast and the light greenish colored trophoblast, correct? And you can see how the trophoblast has now started invading into the endometrium here, right? So now whenever we discuss the lecture henceforth, we'll be talking about the journey of the trophoblast, then the journey of the embryoblast. I might also speak a little bit about the uterine endometrium every now and then. And after this lecture, we shall only continue with the embryoblast journey for a while and consider the trophoblast journey in a separate lecture on the placenta, okay? Alright, so we are now looking at day 7 and day 8. Let's start with the changes occurring in the trophoblast, okay? There is a differentiation and you can see that with the dark green and the light green color. The dark green color is the part of the trophoblast that is actively invading inside and it starts losing its cell membrane, a process known as syncytium and hence it is known as the Syncytotrophoblast, okay? This is in dark green. And the cellular part of the trophoblast, the part that is still retaining its cellular membrane, is known as the cytotrophoblast. That is our distinction number one that happens in the trophoblast, which is divided into syncyto and cytotrophoblast. All right? Distinction number two happens in the embryoblast. Now, if you see, there are two colors there. What you see in the light blue are slightly taller cells and these are known as the epiblast and what you see in yellow are slightly low cuboidal and these are known as the hypoblast. So that's the differentiation occurring in the embryoblast and this leads to the formation of what is known as a bilaminar embryonic disc. Okay. If you observe carefully, there is also a slight cavity that is appeared above the epiblast layer. You see that? That little small cavity is soon to become the amniotic cavity. The cavity lying below the yellow part is just the blastocele that you have already considered before. Let's see what happens with the trophoblast again. You can see that the syncytotrophoblast is increasing at this time. And there are small holes that are appearing and these are known as lacunae in the syncytotrophoblast. Okay, these lacunae start getting bigger and bigger. In the embryoblast, you can see that the amniotic cavity has become quite prominent now. 
and the cells of the epiblast that form the roof of the amniotic cavity this part in light blue are known as the amniogenic cells or the amnioblasts they are responsible for secreting the amniotic fluid now at the same time if you observe carefully there is a slight yellowish layer that is formed over here and there is query whether those cells or that membrane comes from the cytotrophoblastic cells here or they come from the cells of the hypoblast over here either ways what they form is known as the exocelomic or Husserl's membrane and the moment that membrane is formed the cavity that it engulfs is known as the exocelomic cavity also known as the primitive yolk sac okay now if you observe around this time the entire structure has also completely invaded the endometrium and there is a fibrin plug that is sealed it from the outside so we have now entered completely inside the endometrium okay if you observe the endometrium is also becoming highly vascular and there are certain capillaries that are becoming bigger in size and these are known as endometrial sinusoids okay what happens next let's find out firstly the endometrial sinusoids just made contact with the syncytotrophoblastic lacunae and thus we have the first introduction of what is known as utero fetal circulation you can also call this utero placental circulation so it begins as early as 11 to 12 day the lacunae have now combined and become bigger trophoblastic lacunae and the maternal sinusoids with the maternal blood is now mixing into these thus forming a very basic utero placental circulation at the same time if you observe there's a new color that has been introduced this is i think pinkish orange and these cells they say are arising either from the cytotrophoblast or the hypoblast again different authors have different theories regarding that but this layer is known as the extra embryonic mesoderm this is very different from the intra embryonic mesoderm which we shall consider in the next lecture so the extra embryonic mesoderm pinkish orange in color also shows certain holes or cavities that are formed inside it and very soon these cavities are going to join together to form a bigger cavity let's see what happens then this huge cavity that is formed now is known as the extra embryonic coelom that's an important word and you're going to be using it for quite some time extra embryonic coelom remember extra embryonic is important because there's an intra embryonic coelom as well this is happening somewhere around the beginning of the 13th day and if you see the primitive yolk sac as we called it the cavity inside the Husserl's membrane is becoming smaller and shrinking in size and now it is known as the secondary yolk sac while whatever is pinched off is known as the exocelomic cyst right the trophoblastic invasion continues the uteroplacental circulation is becoming more and more prominent as you can see here also the cytotrophoblast in light green color has started invading a little more into the syncytotrophoblast thus forming a structure that resembles villi these are known as primary villi and the further development of primary villi will be considered in the chapter on placenta but please remember this is an important event that happens the development of the primary villi it is seen that the trophoblast starts developing much more faster as compared to the embryonic disc our embryonic disc is still the same it's bilaminar it shows an upper epiblast which has columnar cells and lower hypoblast that has slightly flattened cuboidal cells the secondary yolk sac which is slightly smaller in size is formed and now 
the extra embryonic coelom has given rise to classification of the extra embryonic mesoderm into two. The first one is known as the somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm. This is the mesodermal lining that is lining the cytotrophoblast from all around as well as the amniotic cavity. Right? So all this is the somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm while the mesoderm lining the yolk sac is known as the splanchnopleuric. Now I don't know if you've heard the word splanchnic circulation but that essentially means circulation of the gut which should kind of give you a basic idea that the yolk sac is going to contribute to the development of the gut. Right? Finally, there is a part of the extra embryonic mesoderm into which the coelom does not extend and that is known as the connecting stalk and this is going to give rise to the future umbilicus okay more on that as we progress embryologically so to summarize the second week we first have the trophoblast dividing into the syncytotrophoblast and the cytotrophoblast the appearance of lacunae in the syncytotrophoblast then the embryoblast also differentiates into the tall columnar cells of epiblast and underneath them the flattened cells of the hypoblast. As days progress, by about the 12th day, we have the Husserl's membrane very well established and enclosing the primitive yolk sac. We also have the appearance of the extra embryonic mesoderm with small, small cavities in between and by the end of the 13th day these cavities have all coalesced together to form the extra embryonic coelom which is also known as the chorionic cavity and the yolk sac which is the primitive yolk sac is now the definitive yolk sac and it's slightly smaller in size while the syncytotrophoblast is now evolving into a more particular pillar like a column like structure that is known as primary villi, which is basically syncytotrophoblasts with an invasion of the cytotrophoblasts within its core. Today in the YouTube description, I'm also pasting a link of an amazing animated video that will run you through the entire second week of embryogenesis. And I'll see you in the next lecture where we're going to study a very interesting thing that is known as the primitive streak. See you. Bye-bye.